Hello, welcome to my diary. I'm Tatami. Here I talk about whatever I want to. And today we're going to talk about a movie I saw for the first time two weeks ago for free here on YouTube called Raggedy Ann and Andy's Musical Adventure, I believe. And how basically I'm just under the impression that somebody who has something big to do with Toy Story, the entire franchise, not just Toy Story 1, but like the entire series, must have watched that movie a lot as a kid and gotten a ton of inspiration for it. Okay, so um, I love looking for free animated movies on YouTube to watch with my kids. You know, it's, it's just nice to have new content to watch. And it's nice for me to have new content to watch since I've been an animated movie junkie since I was a little kid. So it's it's hard to find stuff that I just haven't watched unless it's like literally a random dub from another country type of stuff. So I was having fun looking through and I found this one for free and it was nice, um, not a lot of recent comments. So it was nice that I happened to stumble upon it. Now, I know a lot of people out there will be like, Toy Story didn't directly copy everything, blah, blah, blah. They, they were inspired, they made it better. They aren't the first ones to make toys come to life, right? I mean, yeah, of course they aren't. I've seen Pinocchio and that I didn't go into it thinking that, oh, this is Toys Alive. It, Cause you know, obviously Raggedy Ann and Andy were gonna be moving. So I wasn't really trying to, F fight for that from the very beginning. But there was something very pointed about coming into the child's bedroom, seeing the child play with her toys, really love her toys, and then come into the bedroom. There was something very familiar about it. And there was also something very familiar about it was her birthday. The, that was my first red flag. We are, the opening scene is this child loves her toys, it's her birthday, she puts her toys down and goes out to go do something for her birthday and the toys come to life. I'm sorry, does that not sound like the opening scene of another movie that you know very well? And yes, I'm talking about Toy Story 1. So there we have the very beginning and that is when I whipped out my phone and was like, I am taking notes on all the similarities in case that's not the only one. I hope I feel foolish and that that is the only blatant similarity similarity that I see, but we'll see. So we get all the intros with the characters. Um, we have a mad, confident main character who's basically the little girl's favorite toy, and that's Raggedy Ann. Um, she, this little girl, clearly favors Raggedy Ann, takes her around everywhere. Um, and Raggedy Ann's getting beat up every day, has to get sewed up by one of the other toys, which is mad convenient if you're really rough on toys to have another toy that can come to life and sew your toy back up. So um, we have Raggedy Ann, her, her song is very confident, very cute. She's an awesome character. The characters are very cute. The movie itself has, it struggles a little bit in plot area. It's, it's a little lost there, but there is a whole plot, but there's a lot of random shit that goes on that's just like, this didn't actually have to happen. I don't know what this had to do with anything. Uh, but animation wise, I mean, clearly they hired a bunch of people who knew their stuff, who wanted to experiment, who liked to make things look weird, and I love that type of animation so I was absolutely here for it and for that type of animation to be centered for kids and not just because usually when you get that weird animation it's the for a hardcore for adults like this is erotica type level animation and you're like oh okay I guess that's what we have to do if we're gonna have this type of weird shit going on it's got to be crazy sexual bloody crazy type of shit too. Um, so it's fun to see that type of animation with a kids movie and it's clear they were going all out on the animation almost to make up for the lack of plot maybe. I'm not sure. Maybe they're just really good animators. At any rate, so we have the main character. They're doing a great job animating her and her brother really floppy. I really like Raggedy Andy's character. He wasn't wussy at all. He was like a really uh, they really tried to make him really boyish, I think, so that boys would want to buy his doll, maybe. <laughs> I don't know about all that. But I did like that he was very sassy. He's very spirited. He's very, his sister's very happy and content with herself, and he's just yearning for a lot of things and bursting at the seams. So I really liked him. All right, so next similarity we have. Let me see. Oh, it's the little girl's birthday, right? 
So a toy comes in and surprise, surprise, it's um, a fucking brand new version of the exact same toy that is already had except better and newer, okay? So back in Toy Story, remember, we had basically an action figure get replaced by an action figure, a, a cowboy who can make some sounds and, you know, be propped up and around and has some items, and then a spaceman. Those are two different jobs. It's basically the same toy, just one's more upgraded and a different job. So Raggedy Ann, enter a new French doll who is, you know, all that, has a beautiful dress, has a beautiful accent, all of these things. The little girl is very gentle with her, puts her down, goes out of the room for whatever else she has to do for her birthday. This is just one of her gifts or the, like the party is about to happen. I don't know what's happening. I don't remember. So um, they all get introduced to this doll who immediately hates her life here because in her mind she's, you know, a French nobility that should be in France. Oh, does that sound a little bit familiar to you? The idea of this new person being the better version that's basically the same as a toy this kid already has, who wishes they were like off doing whatever it is they were supposed to be doing, as is their character. Hmm, sounds very familiar to me, but we'll just keep going through all of the similarities that I found throughout or I noted and maybe somebody else will watch this movie and note even more than me I don't even know if other people have seen this damn movie I'm just going off on a rant about it because <laughs> I saw it okay where are we Wait, blah 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 oh okay so the, the, the I did mention the toys do come to life obviously when no other kids are around and the movie changes to animated form the second that occurs I really like that it almost was like it was a different dimension it felt like when things occurred in that realm, but then again, it that sometimes got blurred throughout the story. So, eh, you know. Okay, so let me see. Um, oh, then this new toy gets lost, okay? So it gets lost because it gets taken away by a pirate character and the main character who was the original toy the original best toy original favorite toy has to go out on a grand adventure to bring back the newly preferred toy back home so now that i say that out loud it kind of sounds like both the story of woody trying to get buzz back and the story of woody trying to get forky back but there you have it. She has to get Frenchie back because one of the other toys, a pirate, decides to kidnap her and take her away to be his pirate wife or something of that nature. And um, she has to help him bring it home because the child likes this toy now, right? They couldn't very well lose Buzz. He couldn't come home without Buzz because the child likes his toy, the other toys liked Buzz, etc. So um, we also have a similarity with the pirate character because the pirate character very much, in my opinion, parallels that the, the penguin toys, um, the penguin toy in, um, I believe it was the penguin toy, who was kind of just up on the top shelf gathering dust and wheezing. That was like what the pirate's doing. He's up on the top shelf, very neglected, never gets to go down, never gets to see nothing. And sometimes he can get somebody to come up to him and, you know, he's built up some trust for that. And he uses that to be able to escape and kidnap the French doll because he wants a better life for himself. Um, let me see. But I did find a parallel between him being kind of a neglected toy on the top shelf who had a minor role, but it also adds to the storyline and the world building of it. We have... Um, the, the weird there's like a weird camel toy character which is like the sad toy that no one loves which solidifies the theme that is the child's the the whole point of this camel character literally is to solidify the point that it is this toy's sole purpose to be loved by a child if it is not loved by a child what the fuck is going on its life is useless worthless nothing worth living etc etc okay that is the the that is like one of the main plot points and that's kind of the point of the camel itself is to drive home that rule of this world that's my well that's kind of one of my main things is it's like it feels like they these two stories are almost set in the same world because toy story chose to use pretty much the exact same rules throughout and a bunch of different plot points in different characters and different themes. So we're not done. I'm, it's going to be small things. It's going to be big things. We're going to keep going. Um, so 
it needs to, a toy's purpose is to be loved by children. That is what the camel's um, character solidifies. And I mean, we we all know throughout the Toy Story series, that's witnessed time and time again, time and time again, that that is one of the rules of that world. So we have um, both of them have a villain to toy, okay? This crazy villain toy that is intent on keeping other toys hostage so that they um, can keep them within their hierarchical system of abuse for their own benefit. So in the Raggedy Ann and Andy story, it's a character called King Cuckoo, but in the Toy Story series, we do have the Lotso Bear character who everybody, you know, does talk about his villainry and the strange way in which he uses toys for his own benefit for his own gain, you know, and he ends up basically holding ho toys hostage. They can't even leave. They don't even have a choice at one point and they're just getting used and abused. Um, and it's kind of the same with King Cuckoo is he is like, oh, he needs to use people so he can like be bigger, which is like a thing for him. He just wants to be, he's really small, so he's got a complex. So when he laughs, he gets bigger. So he needs some jokesters around. So he uses toys to do so and he turns them into like things. It's it's a long ass convoluted thing. The point is, is it's basically the same character, same plot line. It's, it's highly inspired. Okay, so now we are on a bunch of things. How far am I? 10 minutes? Damn, I need to keep going before I spend all day doing this. So I'm, we're almost done. So we have the um, Forky character I mentioned earlier has a parallel as well in this universe. Forky's character is basically the premise of when you slap two eyes and a mouth on it, or even just two eyes on it, it's a toy. And in this, there's like this weird sack character with like, it's just a saggy thing that has button eyes um, and a button nose maybe. And, and like, it, it just is like a thing that, <laughs> You know, like when your mom makes you just a thing and they're like, it's a character. And sometimes your kids love those toys the best. Those bizarre toys you make out of socks and things around the house. They love those things the best. The rock you paint with eyes, they love them. But it's still a rock with eyes. You know what I mean? It's not really a toy. It's a random ass thing. So that's what Forky's premise was. And this character wasn't a huge character, but I do think maybe Forky was inspired. I don't know. This whole thing just... It, it just is looking like somebody looked at Raggedy Ann and Andy and they were like, it's free real estate. Who remembers this movie? Who will ever remember this movie? It was the 90s. They didn't know we'd all have YouTube and we'd be like seeing this movie in real time, hundreds of thousands of us. So I'm just saying maybe he was really like, this is free real estate and we can just keep going. And then they were just committed to it because fuck it, they already had a huge franchise going. All right, so um, are we done yet? Oh, so finally, also, the French doll character ends up paralleling Bo Peep at one point. She um, <laughs> gets kidnapped by a pirate, but y'all, she don't stay kidnapped for very long. By the time Raggedy Ann finds her to save her out at sea, y'all, this doll has taken over the ship. They're, they're calling her captain. <laughs> They're calling her, oh, captain, my captain, ready to go down for this French doll wherever she goes. And the story flips from having to s rescue her from the pirate to having to uh, at, tell, somehow convince her that it's wiser for her to get off this ship headed to Paris <laughs> and go back to this little ass girl who's just going to put knots in her hair. I didn't, I don't see how she fell for it, y'all. I don't see how she fell for it, but somehow or another, they got her back in that room with that little girl. But I see how wh whoever watched it, they thought this was free real estate, but they also didn't understand it. Paris sounds wonderful. What was the point of that? What did the doll have to gain by going back to that little girl's room? Nothing. The little girl had everything to gain. The doll had nothing. The doll honestly should have just kept selling, sailing to Paris, which is probably why um, Bo Peep, you know, in Toy Story 4 kind of had her Paris ending. She, she went off into the wild unknown. And so, you know, I do think that Toy Story obviously added to the story. They, it was only one movie of Andy and uh, Woody and all. I mean, sorry, of Raggedy Andy and Raggedy Ann and Andy. <sighs> 
But I do think that, you know, they were heavily inspired. They built off the story a bunch of times. They used it as a starting point a bunch of times. I mean, I don't think it's that crazy of a conspiracy to say it. And um, I'm just saying there's clear inspiration. Somebody saw it. Somebody saw it and somebody added to this story a bunch of times. And I'm okay with that. But somebody needs to admit it, okay? Because these older mo movies should get their dues. This movie is really cute. I definitely think you should watch it. I'm going to put a link to it down below in case you want to watch it. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching me rant about this random ass movie from like, I don't know, the 70s probably. <laughs> and the Toy Story franchise. Very random rant to make. But at any rate, thank you so much for watching. And may your ancestors and spirit guides be with you at every crossroads. I'll see you next time.